you ladies, I'm going to make eye contact. <laughs> you ladies, I hope that you're here tonight because you want to serve our God. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, I go to churches, all over little churches, where them ladies, when they don't have a servant's heart, when they don't want to serve God, yeah. they'll make everybody and everything miserable around them. Amen. There's nothing worse. You can feel it, man, alive. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Cold. They're cold spiritually, but it can be 50 degrees in the church and they're going. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. And they're mad at everything. They're mad at everybody. They're mad at their husband. They're mad at preaching. You can see it on them. Yeah. Look, I've had them give me the evil eye. Just look like a... <laughs> we had a lady, she, she low, low. She rolled her eyes. She... <sighs> look at her watch. Little small church, 20, 25 people. Thursday night, preaching all week long. Well, it's always a blessing to preach to folks like that. <laughs> I get Thursday night, I go, ma'am, why, why are you even here? That's rough, man. I said that her husband, I hadn't, I hadn't even noticed him all week. He goes like this, he goes. I'm telling you the truth, he started going. I said, why? He had to live with her. He needed help. Amen. You ladies, I hope I hope you're convinced. Yeah. Amen. You ladies, you preachers' wives, I hope you're convinced. Sure. Amen. Amen. Because if not, I'm gonna tell you little old things will try to blow you out of the water. Yeah. Amen. Am I right? Yeah. Sure. The servant of God is convinced. Amen. You say, well, I just don't have that same zeal that my husband's got. You know, he's, you know, God called him. And I, I'm telling you, ladies, listen. There are some ladies sitting in here, some real servants of God. Yeah. Yeah. That they, you don't got what they got. Amen. Right. Right. It's different. It's different. Them ladies that cook here starting tomorrow. They got stuff already at home. Some of them ladies cook. Man, some of the ladies here, just a blessing. Sister Maddox. Right. Amen. Sure. Sister Shore, Amen. These folks yeah. that love God, I'm telling you, you can't beat them. They're the best. They're the best. Amen. You hear me? How's come some of you other ladies don't have that? How's come you get mad so much? Yeah. Amen. Don't be mad. I'm on dangerous ground. You a servant? You a servant? Did you get what your husband got? A servant of God is convinced. Amen. I, I'll tell you what else. They're controlled. Amen. God can actually move around and do something with yeah. them. Amen. Amen. Oh, there's some folks you can't control them. You know why? They'll just they'll leave your church and go somewhere else. That's right. Yeah. You're not going to tell them anything to do. They'll just go. I, if I don't, you know, I don't like it here, I'll go somewhere else. As they say in Tennessee, else. Yeah. <laughs> Hey man, I just I just won't fool you no more. Just cut you off and boom, go somewhere else. That's killing our churches. Yes, sir. Most pastors nowadays have to they have to tiptoe around through all that. Landmines. Got four or five ladies sitting out there. They've already fought and fussed outside with somebody. They already know all the problems going on. They gotta they gotta kind of finagle around through all that. Well, I'll tell you what, I'd hate to get to heaven and find out that what I had in my life hindered my local church. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. My wife, I, I got a good one. God's given me a good wife. And my wife, she'll, she'll say, we'll be talking sometimes. She goes, honey, I sure hope I'm not a hindrance. I said, oh, you're not, baby. Amen. But I've seen some that are. Yeah. I've known some pastors that's almost lost their mind. Because they can't do anything right. 
I got a friend right now. I'm telling you, he's at almost his wit's end. Amen. Every time he can't do nothing right. Amen. Amen. I just, I'd rather shout and run up down the aisles. Being a servant of God, are you a servant? Amen. How's can you get mad so easy? Amen. What's controlling you? Amen. Amen. I'll tell you what else. These folks, these folks that serve God, they're commended. Yeah. There's going to be some rewards at the end of all of this. Amen. Amen. We was at youth camp all that last year, and there was a gal there that did sign language. And she had got a group of them kids that did sign language together, and they were doing songs. And I asked her, I said, uh, I said, sis, you think you could do that song, uh, Thank You for Giving to the Lord? And she got up there with about seven or eight of them kids and did that song in sign language. You know, thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a life that's been changed. And man, I'm telling you, my lovely Lord, settle down in there. And those pastors that have brought their kids to camp, and those counselors that have brought them, they started going over there and getting them preachers and them ladies and thanking them. And the kids started hugging. Boy, we just had, we called a feast of charity at youth camp. Can you imagine what it's going to be like in yeah. heaven when somebody could walk up to you and say, Brother Glass, do you remember me? He was preaching 45 years ago. 58 years ago. He was a young preacher and you preached and I got saved one Sunday morning. Yeah. I'm telling you, there ain't going to be nothing like it. You can have it. Top that! Right. Give me something more than that! Commend it. I remember when Preacher Lackey was dying. I remember the last camp meeting we was at. Down there, they both, him and, him and Miss Jewel was in wheelchairs. Down at King James Bible Jubilee in Mount Airy, North Carolina. And there was a little old gal that got up, and she's one of them mountain girls. She's probably about 14 years old. They give her the mic, and she walked down there to sing in front of Brother and Sister Lackey. And she started going, When I get to heaven, gonna look for my preacher. We're gonna sing and shout some too. And boy, preacher Lackey, Miss Jewel started. Woo! And that song, the chorus of that song says, We're gonna kick up the gold dust on the hill banks of glory. Yes. Boy, I'm telling you, Brother Lackey started going, Somebody push me! <laughs> and boy, they started pushing him and Miss Jewel around it, gymnasium. But I'm telling you, I got a glimpse of uh, them folks started coming around and hugging the old preacher's neck. Say, why? Because he preached to them. Why don't you got saved? Because the old preacher man. And boy, I'm telling you, I don't know what it's going to be like in heaven, but it's going to be wonderful up there when folks will come and say, do you remember when you served God and you God used you and God touched my life? I'm telling you, there ain't nothing like it. There's nothing compared to that. I don't know about y'all, boy, I'll tell you, one of these days. Amen. Amen. Brother Eric, them boys and them, them kids that you don't think's listening, yeah. they'll look you up and say, you, I know I'd get saved then, so later on, I remember what you said. God saved me. Amen. Then you put a price tag on that. There is none. Amen. So what are you saying? I'm saying the best life there is is to serve our God. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Where my servant is, there am I also. Amen. You want to be where the presence of God is? Amen. Start serving. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Say why? We've done. We've done been burnt. Yeah. Right. We'll never be the same. Right. Say well, you all shouting this week, and you're trying to work it up. Sure, we are. <laughs> Because we felt it move before. Yeah. We've got to have it. If, we, if you could bottle it, we'd, we'd, we'd freebase it. We'd be shooting it in our veins. We've got to have it. Amen. So listen here tonight, some of you young folk, I don't know, maybe some of you older folk, that's never took your life, 
Say, God, here I am. Will you use me? I want to serve you. Maybe you need to get saved. I believe that. I believe there's some here tonight.